Hello, welcome back to Modern East Basics. I'm PG Ty Botting. Today we're working on trapping hands and we'll get right to it. All right, trapping hands in Modern East. How do we do that? Well, basically it's similar to block check counter. We'll get to that in a second. But basically it's a parry, it's a control, and it's a back fist. So just setting up the expectations right off the bat. If he has a punch that's come out. All right, so what we've got here is we got this punch and I'm gonna pass it to the side, that's a parry, and then I'm gonna control, and then I'm gonna pull with my back and my arms to pull him to the strike, okay? Same thing on this side, same hand comes out, so I'm just gonna do parry, connect, not committed, and we'll talk about it in a second, and then we're gonna pull and strike, okay? One, two, three, okay? So there you go, that's the basic thing. So as we work through these with my son, um, I will also show you some excerpts from me working with a student and also some excerpts of working on a uh, wooden dummy. I mentioned that looks a lot like block check counter with sticks. So let's get to that. But it's always still one, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. Same thing becomes the other side. It's one, two, three. Or I could go one, two, three, that side. It's similar, but I'm always stuck with the same stick. If I switch back to hands, he could have that same punch out again. Boom, and I'm on the inside. Or I could choose to be, if he has that same punch out, I can block with this hand starting out. One, two, three, okay? So that's where we got the difference. We can use either hand to initiate and either hand to attack. Whereas we got block check counter with a stick, it's always attacking with the stick hand and, and, and blocking with the stick hand. All right, going from the inside. One, two, back fist. 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 All right, that's going from the inside. Going from the outside, we're going to have to pivot our body a lot. So one, two, back fist. 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 So if he's got a punch coming out again, the punch comes out, there's a few things you'll notice. This parry is such that this palm is contacting initially. And I'm either coming on this side, or if it's the same hand, he's got this other hand out, and I'm going to parry it this side. Either case, the palm is in the contact area, the thumb is pointing towards me, okay? Once I do that, so it's back on this side so you can see better. Once I do that, I'm going to transfer, and I'm keeping this hand above, okay? Notice when I transfer, I don't have a committed grip. I have a hooking grip, either just the, just the uh, last couple fingers, and then these guys are guiding. What I'm going to do with that, when I do this with... The, after this transfer is pull across my back, not my arm, I'm not pulling with my arm, I'm pulling across the back at the same time as I'm using the back to do this strike, okay? So back to the start again, so boom, boom, okay? See how it jerks him? That's exactly what you wanna do. So back to using a fist, okay? One, two, back fist, okay? Now, you can change it to do a hammer fist, it's the same motion, one, two, hammer fist, and he's starting to show the block for what he's going to do. That's good. So one, two, hammer fist. Okay. Now where am I going with the targets? So back fist there, back fist there, hammer fist there. I can do the forearm right across the neck. Um, I can hit the eye. <laughs> I could do all of those things, but you want to know where the targets are. Okay. So those three pieces, the parry with the palm facing you for the most basic, the control, okay, the hook and the pull and strike. Okay. Or one, two, hammer fist, or one, two, forearm strike, okay? We'll get to other options later, but that's the that's how we're starting. Two other details I want to talk about with uh, what we're doing on that sequence. We already talked about the targeting, but we also got a few things here. When I did that pull, he's got the punch out. When I got this pull, I'm stealing his balance, right? That's what you want to do. If you steal someone's balance, they're already built into, hey, I've got to stay up and readjust. So you get to take advantage of that. So the first thing is that that pull, it's the stealing bounce. But the other thing is I'm pulling him into the strike. So I'm accentuating my power, okay? And then last I have this equal and opposite motion, <laughs> okay? Uh, and then he gets to suck it up. Lastly, and you already saw that in a second ago, was that the pull and the strike and the control means he's only got one option to block. He can either duck or, <laughs> or suck it up. But if I've got this hand controlled, he's only got that hand to block, okay? To parry, to block, to make something happen, okay? If he doesn't block with that hand, he either gets hit or maybe he ducks, in which case <laughs> we adjust. Again, this is a drill though, not a technique, so keep that in mind. So the three things. 
One is the stealing the balance. Two is I've got this hand under control, so he has to use his other hand. So we're priming now a drill, a give and take drill. All right, now we've got the pieces. Let's put that together in the drill. And again, this is the starting drill. And what we're doing is the one, two, three that I did, the parry, the control, the back fist. This back fist is his one. So that's one, two, three, and, and that three is my one. It's gonna go back and forth that way. You'll also notice one thing, where his eyes are on the inside of his hand, he's gonna be on the outside of my hand. That's the standard way of doing it. So let's go do a couple rounds of that and talk about some details. All right, so he's got his initial punch coming out. I'm a block, hit, strike. He does this, he pulls it, he controls it, and then he feeds me. Now I'm gonna block open. So now I'm on the other side. He does the same thing, one, two and back fist one two back fist okay one two back fist i have to catch it before it hits me control back fist okay so let's just do a couple rounds one two boom one boom one two three one two three and that's my one one two three that's his one one two three okay so you notice i'm having to move and do a little bit more being on the inside is a little bit more work but that's the standard way of doing it couple more details on that. You notice that both of us are doing this palm in transfer, palm out, back fist, okay? Palm in, transfer, back fist. Palm in, transfer, back fist. Palm in, transfer, back fist. We'll talk about changing targets and we'll talk about the opposite order in a little bit. You can also go across. So then that is one, two, back fist. 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 So let's get to one of these opposite orders. So we're gonna both be on the outside. I'm gonna take the harder line again. He'll be doing the same thing he was doing, okay? If I give him a back fist and he goes on the outside, it's one, two, there. So normally I was blocking this way. I can actually block this way, okay? So now my palm is outwards. My thumb is facing towards him. And I'm still to do one, two, three. He does one, two, three. I go one, two, three. He goes one, two, three. One, two, three. So we're both on the outside. No one, you don't see this a lot, but it is an option. One, two, three. 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 And the advantage of this one, it's, it's not as much work and it's also a little bit safer because I'm stopping it before it gets me. I'm not passing it across my face. I'm stopping it before it gets me. So it feels a little more comfortable. Back to the first one just to show you the difference. I'm here. One, two, three. He does this. I'm going to pass it across myself. Okay. Boom. 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 Okay. Boom. Now I can anytime he just keeps going. I can switch this way. He doesn't change what he's doing. So now we have two options that we're doing. Okay. Other things we can do to change up who's on the outside, who's on the inside, and things like that. So I was here, he, he goes left, right, left, and I can be on this side, or I can be on this side. Let's start with the standard one again. So, boom, I'm on the inside. Anytime in here, I can do what I'm going to do, which is just do a two count. So he does this, and I go one, two. Now he's on the outside, and I'm on the easy outside. Okay? Okay? Boom. So that's one trick you can do is switch up the counts. Another thing you can do if you want to switch from being on the inside to the outside is, so he's on the outside, I'm on the inside. Okay. I can decide to, one, two, instead of feeding the back fist, I can feed him a hook punch. He has to block with this one because he's, I'm holding this hand and that's the closest. Okay. So he, he then transfers and he hits me. So he can do a punch. And I'm going to change by using the hand that's closest. Even though he's got my hand, I'm using closest. So now we're, boom, okay? So now I'm on the outside again. Let me show you that one more time. He starts, he's on the outside, then I safe place. I'm on the inside. A little more tricky, right? I have to get my timing exactly right. Anytime in there, I can decide to go one, two, hook punch. He goes one, two, he feeds me and I follow him. And now I'm on the outside. Okay. So there you go. There's two ways to change. All right. So let me show you the, uh, another way. It's a little tricky to get to the outside if you're on the inside. So it's one, one, two, three. Normally I'll pass it this way, right? 
So let's do a couple rounds of that just to show and getting a good gear. So we're here, 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 here. Now I pass it and now I'm on the outside. Okay. Did you see what I did? Might not have seen. So let's take it really, really slow. One more time. One, two, three. So basically what I do, as soon as he controls this hand, I go with it and block. There's a lot of other things you can do with that, which is why we want to train this semi-difficult move. So one, two, three, and now I'm on the outside. So now we've got three ways to get from the inside to the outside. I'll leave it up to you to figure out how to get from the outside to the inside. It's kind of reverse of those things. Lastly, we've got an outside variation. So it's one, two, punch. One, two, punch, one, two, punch, one, two, punch. So while you're messing with this drill, while you're playing with the drill, trying to get something out of it, you need to start raising the bar, putting some challenges into the drill, whether you're challenging timing, distance, it's not just speed. Most times people want to speed up a drill and they think that's all they need to do to make it challenging. No. <laughs> Okay, in fact, doing that makes it sloppy and you start losing benefit. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna talk about a few things that are happening. We've already showed you one of them. So if, if Connell comes back in here and I start and I change it. So you notice that I pull him on that. Even if I'm on the inside, right? He comes here, one, two, boom. Okay, keeps on going, one, two, boom. I pull him, right? So that challenges it by shifting the balance. I don't have to do it fast, okay? I can go one, two, boom, one, two, boom. One, two, boom, and that challenges the, the drill. The other thing I can do is really power through slowly the, uh, the attack and the targeting. So if, I'm, if he's got his punch out here, I'm gonna go one, two. When I come out, I need to challenge into that target. Even if I'm doing it slow, that makes him move because you wanna do that uh, and you wanna get a reaction. You wanna make the reaction happen naturally, not just be uh, anticipated and predicted because everybody knows what's happening. Okay, so it comes out again, one, two, boom, okay? You want them to feel that, and then you keep going. Okay. There you go, so that's two things. You need to challenge the distance, the timing. Don't worry about the speed so much. It tends to get really, really sloppy really fast. Let's not do that. So the next thing you can do to change up the drill is now you start changing some of the targets. Right now we were going all through the, the head and temple and jawline. What happens if we do something different? Say we're just playing, he's going one, two, three, one, two, three, I'm on the inside, one, two, three, one, two, three, on the inside. I can go here and go down. He's still gonna keep going, so it's pass through, control, and hit back. Okay, so it just keeps on going. So what did I do? I changed where my hand went. If this punch came in, I went one, two, instead of staying on the top, I end up going one, two, boom, okay? And then he, controls, transfers, and hits. So we can go one, two, instead of going back fist high, we go one, two, back fist. One, two, hammer fist. One, two, hammer fist. One, two, hammer fist. You can do it on the outside too. One, two, hammer fist. One, two, hammer fist. One, two, hammer fist. From this back fist to a vertical hammer fist. So I can go here, he comes in, punch, one, two, boom. He doesn't care, he does the same reaction. One, two, boom, okay? One, two, boom, one, two, boom. He's gonna still pass through. Everything is the same. Just like if you've done Hubud, um, we change the targets and it's still the same flow. So you get to play with it, play in your targets, boom, right? Change your heights, he keeps on going. Boom, right, okay, one, two, boom, one, two, boom, okay. Uh, now we're going to get into more um, just inserts. So we're not going to go work on a flow. We've worked the flow, and now we're going to build things that you can build it. Okay, so if he's got the punch out here, one, two, boom. Okay, that's a forearm takedown. Forearm takedown is with the waist, not with the arm. Okay, and it's not with one arm or the other. It's with the waist, and all I get to do is do this and shrink my body. So if he comes in, one, two, whoom, okay. And I'm not taking him all the way down on purpose because we're up here showing things. Plus, my son doesn't really train a whole lot, so I appreciate him helping me. 
if I've got the other side of his arm, so say he's got a punch, and I want to get, so the same punch is coming out, but I'm on the outside of his arm, okay? I can decide to go pull and arm bar, okay? Pretty simple, right? Same other side, just see the angle. One, two, arm bar. You can also decide to say I'm on the inside. One, two, and he blocks. I can decide to go take advantage of this lock here and do the palm center. Okay? So you may not have done a palm center. I'll show it real fast one time. One, two, he, as soon as he hits that forearm, I trap it against my forearm and I roll and put pressure. Okay? You can always follow up with all sorts of things. We're not going to do that. So, so sometimes another insert is just a simple shove. Instead of the arm bar, or instead of the control of the pull, I can actually make the pull instead a shove. So if I'm, he's got the punch coming out, and normally I would do this pull before I strike. Okay, so again, he's got the punch coming out. One, two, boom. I can decide to, to push and shove it into him. So I'm one, two, and back fist, right? Some of these things will break the flow. Um, one more time so you can see from this side. He's got the punch. One, two, right? And then I follow. So you have arm bars, you have your uh, forearm takedowns, you've got your palm center, you've got center locks. Basically, anytime you have a con uh, contact in there, you can do a lock if you trap it. In the middle of the transfer, okay, if I do this, he goes one, two, he is now in this lock here, okay? If I adjust really fast, He's in that lock there. Boom. I pull across and I get him in what I call jail, right? He's in this lock here, pivot. He's in this lock and his wrist is doing his own arm bar in his arm and I just push through there. So he gave me that. So you start to find these holes in the drill, which is good. So why do you do a drill? You do a drill to have a context within which you can explore applications. But you don't want to do that before you have the drill because you're going to not have a legitimate or a realistic holes because people aren't doing things right. So all of these inserts are good. All of the changing the targets are good. And you start building up to kind of a controlled, if you will, once you get more random, you get a controlled kind of semi sparring. Okay. So you can insert all of the things. We got locks, we got extra strikes, we got changing targets. We've got inside and outside of the arms and you've got a lot of other cool things. And now you got to start to see that you can actually spend a large portion of time for empty hand exploration with uh, your trapping hands. So hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please like and subscribe, hit the bell button, and feel free to share it wherever you want to. And until then, we'll catch you next time. Thanks.